Happy Friday, everybody. Annie B here. I'm at Doyle Sales, where they are building our sales, and I'm doing a little bit of filming. But I wanted to take a moment to make sure that you know that our bonfire campaign for the official launch t-shirt has started today. This first one week campaign is all about making sure that there's a batch of t-shirts going out to people and hopefully getting to them before launch day. That's so that you can wear it in Mattapoisit when we launch, uh, if you want to, and then we'll kick off another campaign in another week or so. But uh, those won't get to you in time for launch day. They'll still support us though for all of our launch day costs, like for porta potties and public safety officers and all of that sort of thing. The t-shirt itself is an illustration by Jan Adkins, one of my very favorite illustrators to work with. He has uh, been the author of Getting Started in Boats for Wooden Boat Magazine, and he's done a lot of illustrated books about how to sail and how to build boats. And um, it's a really beautiful drawing that basically is saying goodbye to the farm in Granby and moving on to our next things. We hope that you head to the bonfire link that's below in the description and support us for all of our launch day endeavors. And we can't wait to see you there. That's Mattapoisit at Shipyard Park, 10 o'clock in the morning on June 17th. And that continues on into the 18th for a two day celebration. Thank you very much for all of your support. We look forward to seeing you. In the last week before the final fairing of the hull with the longboards, the steam was flowing all through the work days, trying to get the oak to swell up as much as possible before the lower seams were filled and the hull painted. Inside the boat was the now usual flurry of activity. On this day, Scott was fitting the mahogany and cedar sole into the saloon. And over in the galley, Kyle was working on the water system in preparation for the first onboard test of the stainless tanks. And here Steve was up on the housetop making vent holes for the door aid boxes that will end up bringing fresh air into the cabin. And over here, this one's coming in. We got a reading light up. And then this situation, that gets mounted up in there. Pretty slick, little piece of locust, all one piece. But as the temperatures rise, it is really nice to get some air moving in the boat. We got a bunch more fans to install, a lot more reading lights, and then finally we'll get everything terminated and we're gonna hide all of our wires in locust chases so that'll match all of these rails. Scott, how does it feel having some air blowing? In oh, that's so nice. It's fresh, cool air coming straight out of the head. <laughs> <laughs> there will be two vertical panels here behind the fridge. This one will have the main AC switches, as well as a spot to remotely mount the oil filter and oil pump for the engine, so that it'll be easy to monitor and maintain. And over at the nav station, with most of the electrical system, including the house batteries, all installed, the next big task was getting the AC inverter charger all set up. So I've got these uh, re resistors here that we're going to use for the pre-charge circuit to light off the big inverter charger that we have built into the boat. But since that's not done yet, I can't run any AC power off the boat system. We're going to use this Ugreen Power Roam 1200 watt inverter battery system to power the soldering iron and the heat shrink gun, which is one of the highest electrical loads you can have. This uses the same battery technology that we have in the main boat battery bank, lithium iron phosphate, and that gives you over 3,000 cycles 
on the life of this unit. Pretty nice little joint. Bingo. And do another one. This has AC and DC charging. Once I've run this down a little bit, we're going to go over and use the DC charging because once again, if you don't have an inverter on the boat, you need to be able to charge off DC. But on the AC side, if you're on shore power or something, this can charge from zero to 80% in just 50 minutes, which is great if you forget to keep it charged. So this came with a bunch of different cables, right? The cable for plugging it into the wall, and then a separate cable for plugging into solar panels. It's cool to be able to charge this off solar. And then finally, the one we're gonna use for a regular 12 volt outlet, because we've got outlets built in down here. Plug that in. And then you can see we're charging almost 100 watts input and only 26 out. So we'll be fully charged in 54 minutes. Now the DC charging is a little slower, but if you really want to charge quickly, AC, 50 minutes to go from 0 to 80%. So thanks, you Green. This Power Roam 1200 is really, really useful. With a 10-year expected battery life coupled with a 5-year warranty, the Ugreen Power Roam 1200 watt portable power station is available for $999. And check the video description for a link and a coupon to save $150 off your purchase on the Ugreen website. Uh, there is yet to be water in the bilge, so we like that. We're about two-thirds of the way up the height, so probably half the way up the volume of the two starboard tanks. And we're ISO'd from the bilge right now. Okay, we're ISO'd from the bilge. Yeah. Yesterday, we filled up this tank with water, um, got the water maybe like 10 centimeters above the level of the tank, then we saw water start to leak out of this flange. We were like a little concerned about this because this flange is pretty thin and the gasket was not very squishy. So we're trying solution number one, which is a much softer gasket. If that doesn't work, then we'll go to solution number two, which would have to be a stiffer flange. So right now I'm swapping out this old rubber gasket for a new closed cell foam one. And then I'm stalling them with Little number 10 bolts and a little bit of a food safe lubricant. This is a stainless on stainless, so relatively prone to galling. So a bit of lubricant should help keep that at bay. Before he got going on Arabella's plumbing, Kyle worked with George on the many priming and varnishing jobs that needed doing, including this extra propane locker that David had put together, which is now installed in its spot on the foredeck. And Steve got back to work on the main sheet traveler. Here he was incorporating these oak rootstock braces to help with the forces from many directions this assembly will one day experience. Atkins plans. 
he has a little bronze traveler here in the center of the house. Uh, and this is uh, another type of name for this is a horse. So if you look, there's the traveler in the stern. And you can see how it's essentially just a loop of bronze rod. And in this, we have eight inches of travel in the middle. And what that traveler is for is these blocks here attached to it, and it controls the boom. So you can haul the boom in, or you can let the boom out, uh, and it does that off that traveler, and that gives that some play. Now, in more modern times, they've made a longer traveler that goes onto tracks, uh, and that has a bunch of advantages over this traveler, uh, just being a bar. So you can take the car and you can move it to one end of the traveler or the other and you can stop it there and then let out line in and out for the boom. Uh, and it helps with having the boom out and if you jibe and the boom goes to the other side of the boat, uh, it can reduce that slamming. It doesn't have it as far as it can travel. The issue that we have is the companionway. So we need to float the companion way with our traveler. And that's probably part of the reason Akin put in such a small traveler. And that's what this structure here is for. We've got some thick cherry at either end. And in the middle, these are oak rootstock. So when we dug up the oak stumps for the hanging and lodging knees in Arabella, these are some of the last two pieces of oak root that we have left. So I use those for the knees here to to help brace all of this. And when this traveler gets bolted onto the house, the companionway slide can go right through here. So this will float over the companionway and this should be a strong enough structure to carry that track. No leaks yet. So we just filled up both tanks um, about a foot above each tank, which is like half a PSI of pressure. And uh, we didn't see any leaks on the main gaskets, which is good. So the softer gaskets seem to have worked there. We saw a few tiny leaks coming through the bolt heads, which we're gonna solve with ceiling washers. And then we should be all good to go. I gave it only like a really small chance it leaks when you get to the ocean and start like really shaking around. But if it does, like there are some operational ways you could solve it, right? Like you can mess with these valves such that you never get to the level of the flanges. You could, you know, do the operational stuff for a while and then solve the design when you have more time. Yeah. But you just didn't put a fuse in the holder. I've been sitting Yesterday. here with a headlamp on trying to do this soul in the dark. Yeah. Now I can see all the mistakes. Take the fuse back out. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these are in uh, up in the angle, yeah. yeah, and then some of these are straight in, yeah. So I alternated. Nice, make it stronger. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. <laughs> and then you bung them. Yeah, we'll bung yeah, we'll them. them and then varnish. Yeah, no nice. Varnish, I mean. But you need to imagine they're gonna be getting. Oh yeah. Hold on. Doing your pull-ups. That is on there. Yeah.
workouts. <laughs> Robin's gonna spend like three hours a day hanging on that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Joe the machinist had put in the time to get this salvaged windlass from Victoria ready for action again. He and Steve worked out a mount that would work, and with all his extra time, Steve got this locust piece put together for it that George sanded and finished prior to installation. The next trick was to figure out where to drill the holes to feed the anchor chains through the hull into the chain locker below. Looks good. I'll cut some holes. Better you than me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see if we got a hole saw that fits these. Let's see if we get lucky. They're doing a bang up job with the steam today. It's amazing what happens when it's someone's job. I was trying to tend to it the other day and do everything else, and yeah. fire kept kind of almost going out. Yeah, a little big, a little big for the little one. But it is spot on for the big one. Yeah, that's great. Satchel, I hope we got this right. I'm drilling a hole through the deck. You know, it's never too early to learn how to replace a plank. <laughs> Smart trick there to find the center. Yeah, you like that? Partially, we're going to come through the probably the edge of the center line blocking. We're between deck beams. Yeah, now you can see perfect. There's our uh, edge of the center line blocking. Drilling big holes in the boat. <laughs> deck core? Yeah. Through two seams. Yeah, and there's the two strands we put in. This one's not quite right. Yeah, it's oh. 
Oh yeah, but I'm gonna buff that up and that'll go in. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna clean that up. Seventy seven does everything. Nineties high string. Seventies mostly fabric foam and uh, You're literally plastics. a walking three M ad. Just made your mask unusable. <laughs> I think you might have gotten enough adhesive on there. <laughs> you made it a bit longer then. Oh. Oh. What do you think? It's all right. That'll do. It serves its purpose. You can grab them. <laughs> Steve wrapped this rope around the boat so that more of the steam could be concentrated on the lower planks that weren't getting it wet enough. So that's what's going on. And you can kind of see Arabella again, which is nice. Oh, look at this. Steam production is absolutely going off right now. This thing is ripping. I'm going in. If I don't come out in a few minutes, come find me. But only a few days left to swell before we need to longboard. Oh, this is kind of nice, but all right. <laughs>